Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It seems I've been having a little bit of problems with the uh, audio on these studies, and I apologize. I've got a professional microphone. It's a Shure, S-H-U-R-E. It's it's a professional microphone. It's what the uh, studio performers use as a backup. I don't have the $500 one. I got the $200 one. Some of the mics are, you know, you can spend thousands of dollars if you really want to. But, uh, you know, this is a voice mic. And then I have a computer that I use for Microsoft Sound Recorder. And then I have a super fast computer that I use to process it, to turn the audio into a video to be able to put it on YouTube. So I don't know if it's my one computer that is recording, the computer that's processing, or maybe it's YouTube itself that's not uploading it properly. I, I don't know. So if there's a problem, please let me know. I just, I have... I have no idea sometimes, you know, what's uh, going on. I've been having problems with uh, with uh, spyware and everything else. And I mean, I'm not a dummy when it comes to this stuff. I got antivirus, anti-spyware, and uh, it's just, you know, I'm a target. So. All right, so this is going to be, uh, I guess, part 11 of Day of the Lord versus Day of Christ. We're still on chapter 2 of the book of Joel. This is part C. And uh, so I'm going to make Joel a playlist, and this is also going to be part of a playlist of Day of the Lord. And I'm going to try to, you know, let's get done with uh, Joel chapter 2. I know a lot of this. I, it seems like I'm going over the same material. Bear with me. Uh, you know, it's... We're trying to get everybody primed for what is coming. You know, it's amazing. The um, Now, I am not a white supremacist. I'm white. But... Uh, we're supposed to be the servants of the Most High God and of His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. If you don't want to know what Jesus looks like, I suggest you read Revelation chapter 1. I'll tell you exactly what He, you know, give you a, a fair description of what He looked like. But uh, that little thing that happened in Charlottesville, just so you know, uh, they had the kosher own press vilified them as a bunch of Nazis. Of course, what else are they going to do? But also, the mayor is Jewish. Why does that not surprise me? And the police chief is black. So even though they had a permit for an assembly, they were denied any speakers to speak. And then... Um, our president comes out and says, well, you know, there's fault on both sides. Well, they had a permit. They're not even permitted to speak. You know, Jewish mayor and a black police chief uh, decided permit or no permit, peaceful assembly, nope, not going to happen. Seems like every day the uh, more and more of our so-called rights are gone. You know, it won't be until the Christians are being killed for their faith, until they start waking up to who they are. And they've been, the, the 501c3 tax-exempt businesses that are masquerading as churches, with church in the name, I mean, just because you've got a company called Federal Express, that doesn't mean they're part of the federal government, you know. They're not part of the federal government. 
you know, and just because a business has the name church, you know, uh, Glory, Mount Moriah, Glory Baptist Church, that don't mean it's a church. It's a 501c3 tax exempt state incorporated business with the name church in it. And they're going to preach the government's public policy message. If the government says that sodomites can get married, the church isn't going to say a word. Oh yeah, those verses in the Old Testament, they were that was nailed to the cross. Oh yeah. You know, you know the, the, the verses that says if a man lieth with mankind as with womankind, it's an abomination. You know, the ones that say they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Oh yeah, that was nailed to the cross. Don't, you know, no big Yeah, don't worry about it. Hey, let's give them scholarships to become elementary school teachers. There you go. You know, that's uh that's the uh message preached by the majority of churches today. So, and I tell you what people, there's it's going to be the the, the demon nominational churches their members that are going to be our enemies in the end times. They're going to be the ones that turn us in. They're going to be the ones that do this. They're going to be the ones that say, well, you know, Jesus supposedly, he said, he pre, he taught us about the pre-trip rapture and, and it didn't happen. So he's a false prophet. And they're going to, they're going to follow the beast and the false prophet, the majority of which God always has his remnant. There's even going to be uh, seven or eight eight thousand Jews in Jerusalem that get saved according to the uh, Book of Revelation. Well, maybe they're going to be Jews. They might be Palestinians. I don't know. It says I, I forget if it's seven or eight thousand. It says that uh, give glory to God during the uh, tribulation. So I'm assuming they get saved, but. All right, well, I've been jibbing, jabbering for seven over seven minutes, and I haven't even started. We're going to skip around a little bit since we've already read uh, Joel chapter 2, and uh, so let's get started here. In verse 3, a fire, now it's talking about an army. Now, during the time of the... Jeremiah, the Babylonians came in and were a physical army that did this. Well, guess what? There, in the end times, there's going to be a spiritual army that does exactly this. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing, nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Now let's face it, people. The earth's going to be burned with fire. I know I've hit this before in the other studies, but, you know, the flood of Noah, it was water. Next time it's going to be fire. In Psalms 104, verse 4, it says, Who maketh his angel spirits and his uh, his ministers a flaming fire. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, let's take a look. All right, uh, 2 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense... That means to, that's payback, that's repaying, repayment. Seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense 
tribulation, that's trouble, seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Oh, yeah. We're going to have trouble in this life. We were promised trouble in this life. I don't know where these people think they're pre-trib rapture and they're not going to have to do any suffering. I mean, read the book of Acts. If you don't think God's people suffer, read the book of Job sometime, you know? Verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, mighty angels, not a bunch of weak, limp-wristed, you know, transgendered, whatever, call, you know, pink, pink uh, Antifa army or whatever. No, 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 no. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power Second witness, Second Peter chapter 3. But beloved, be not ignorant. That means you don't know something. Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Do you know the Sabbath was the seventh day, right? So... The Bible says, you know, six days of work, seven, seven days to rest and basically reflect upon the Lord. That's basically what you were supposed to do uh, under the Old Covenant. And I don't think it's a bad thing to do under the New Covenant. So, I mean, it's not essential for salvation. But according to... All these scholars and calculations that I've come up with, the earth is approximately 6,000 years old. Could it be that the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ, will be the Sabbath, the Lord's Sabbath? You know, days as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. Uh, you know, 6,000 years, it's like the sixth day, right? Seventh day will be the Sabbath. That's when, uh, isn't Satan bound for a 1,000 years? All right, take a look in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, 2, and 3. Now, Revelation 20, <laughs> I mean, that's the end. 20, 21, 22, I mean, that is... You know, that's it. Uh, Revelation's only got 22 chapters. And uh, if you want to know what my doctrine is, you know, take a look from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation chapter 22. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. I'll bet you that's Michael. And no, Michael is not Jesus. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. I've had people tell me the devil and Satan is two different beings. Uh, eh, wrong. That's not what the Bible teaches. So he's got a key to the bottomless pit, a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him in. He locked 
He locked it with that key, right? And shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. So there's going to be a thousand years of rest. The Sabbath? I don't know. That's kind of my theory. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. That's a whole nother Bible study that I did. So, all right. Back to 2 Peter chapter 3. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And my opinion is this is for to the unbelievers it's going to come as a thief in the night. I don't think the believers, it, it, to us it's not going to be like a thief in the night. We're, we're going to be looking for the signs of his coming. Read Matthew 24. I've got an entire Bible study uh, playlist on, on Matthew 24. We're, we're going to see signs and wonders in the, in the skies and in the heavens. We're going to know. I mean, the sun's going to get dark. The moon's going to withdraw her light. It's going to be turned to blood. Uh, stars are going to fall from the sky. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's not going to be a... We're going to be looking up going, ah, it's almost time if we're still alive. A lot of you that are listening to me will probably be killed for your faith. I mean, let's face it. The uh, Christians and the whites are getting to be the most hated group of people on the face of the earth. The Muslims hate us. The Jews hate us. And then you got the blacks. They hate most, many of the blacks hate us. I mean, it's just, I can't believe the venom from the black nation of Islam, from the so-called black Hebrews, and even the ones that don't believe anything. That's just, I mean, just walking around the looks. It's its unbelievable. I don't, I don't hate anybody for the color of their skin. I mean, I, you know, one time I was, uh, had an auto accident and I was uh, laying on the, side of the road and well actually I was laying out in the middle of the road and a black nurse stopped and uh, held my hand and, and blocked traffic and uh, waited with me until the ambulance came I uh, what I hate her because she's black no no but I just yeah what what I can what can I tell you but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat you know that's basically the sun the elements melt and they burn I mean it's amazing you know science is like they, they don't know why a sun burns they have no idea how they were started no idea zero the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The all earth also, and the works there that are therein shall be burned up. Ain't going to be no water flood Noah this time, people. It's going to be flames. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Okay. All right, let's go back to Joel chapter 2. All right, Joel chapter 2, verse 10. It's talking about the uh, army coming. The earth shall quake before them. That means to tremble. You know, you've heard of an earthquake, right? The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall shall withdraw their shining. So where else do we 
see about earthquakes? Well, turn to the book of Nahum. Okay? The, um, oh, you never heard of Nahum? That's one of those tiny little books that they call the Minor Prophets just before the New Testament, you know, the book of Matthew. Let's take a look at Nahum. The Burden of Nineveh. Now remember, the book of Jonah, Jonah was told to go preach to Nineveh, and they repented. Well, Nahum is, I don't know, a couple, maybe a couple hundred years after when the Lord, had, they, you know, they repented for a while, and then they went back to the old wickedness. I mean, let's face it. Jesus said the, the sow that's washed goes back to the wallowing in the mire and the, the dog is, returns to its own vomit. I mean, human nature, people. And I'm no better. I am no better. Nahum chapter 1, verse 1, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. That don't sound good. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. That's not you. Verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger. Praise the Lord for that, because if he was quick to anger, I'd have been, I'd have been dead before I graduated high school. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind. What's a whirlwind? Hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry, and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel and the flowers of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him. Ooh. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned. The earth is burned at his presence, yea, the world and all that dwell therein. You see, people, uh, <laughs> we're going to be taken up with him in the clouds when he does all this. So, you know, we're going to be protected, but uh, ugh. verse 6. Here's a question. Who can stand before his indignation? What's indignation? Extreme hatred. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. You know, in the... We, I think in a previous study we read in Revelation where the uh, there'll be hail, hailstones from cast out of heaven, weighing about a talent, which is like 70 pounds, like 32 kilograms, you know? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood... He will make an utter end of the place, there, place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do ye imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. For while they be folded together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. You know what you do with dry stubble? You burn it. 
There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Thus saith the Lord, Though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now I will break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bonds in sunder. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts. Perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more uh, shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. All right, J uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 11. Well, let's go read 10 again. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. You can read Matthew 24, and you can read Revelation. Uh, well, in the previous studies, I covered this pretty thoroughly, so I don't think I should cover it again. Verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. Yeah, he's got mighty angels, right? For he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? And the answer is none. See, my opinion is the day of the Lord is what it's going to be called for the unbelievers. That's going to be a day of wrath and fury and vengeance. Whereas the day of Christ is for those of who've, who are beloved of the Lord. That's not going to be a day of wrath. And your pre-trib rapture teachers are trying to teach you that it's two separate events. I don't think so. I think it's the same event. I think, you know, I think the day of the Lord, I think Jesus Christ is Lord. So when they try to tell you that the day of the Lord and day of Christ is two different things, just remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. Basically, I think what they're trying to do is tell you that Jesus Christ is not Lord. If the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different things, well, then I guess Jesus Christ is not Lord. And sorry, I've read that in the Bible. Jesus Christ is Lord. One day, every knee is going to bow and confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. In Philippians 2.10, we read that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Romans 14, 11, as it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. All right, let's go back to Joel chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me, turn ye even to me. With all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart. People used to tear their clothing as a sign of humility. But the Lord says, and rend your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Amen to that. Slow to anger. Amen to that. And of great kindness. Amen to that. And repenteth him of the evil. See, when God repents of doing evil, it's God turns, turns away from doing judgment. Don't ever let anybody trick you into thinking that God repenting and our repenting is the same. It's not. God has... No evil to repent of. When God repents of the evil, he's repenting, he, he's turning away from doing judgment. 
like what happened in Nineveh. I mean, let's face it. Jonah went there and preached. And they turned from their evil ways, and God repented of the judgment he was going to bring down upon them. God doesn't, God's not evil that he has to turn away from doing evil. But mankind is evil. We, you know, there's people who say we don't have to repent of our wickedness. I disagree. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9, the Bible declares, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And the answer to that is God. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And that's us, people. That's me. I'd be a fool to, to argue with that. But that's not God. So, For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. People, that is a, you can't get a better reference to the marriage supper of the Lamb than this. Marriage supper of the Lamb. In Revelation 21, verse starting in verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Overcome what? The tribulations of this world. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and saucers, and those that play with Harry Potter, oh, I'm sorry, and saucers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Back to Joel 2. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. And people, that's what's going to, that's what's getting, that's happening now. The, the heathen. The heathens are ruling over everything in Europe and in the United States. The heathen. Those that do not know Christ. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? I've, I, I get these so-called atheists, which I, I know who they are. They're not atheists. They're satanic infiltrators. And they're always, they're always mocking, saying, well, they're still waiting for Jesus. It's been a couple thousand years, and they're still waiting. <laughs> well, one day he's going to come. 
Verse 18, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. I just did another Bible study on the fig tree and the vine. The fig tree was Judah and the vine was Israel, of which Judah was only one tribe out of 12. Check the playlist. Verse 23, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. And that's Jesus, people. That hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. You know, I've never known a true Christian that's ever been ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward. Ah, now we're getting to the good stuff. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Ooh, when did this happen? Well, let's take a look. Jesus gave a warning in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 18. He warned, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And then it warns, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their present parents, and cause them to be put to death. This is what I was warning about a little earlier. It's the church people that pray the true believers. It is. Trust me. Matter of fact, let's go back and read a little bit more of this. Uh, Matthew 10, and let's start 17, verse 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues? And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. 
and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. You know, you can say Yeshua all you want. Nobody's going to hate you. Start saying the name of Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What? We have to endure to the end? That's what Jesus said. Don't argue with me. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Wow. In John chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus speaking, If I had not done among them the works which none other man did. Now, what did Jesus do? He did works, plural. What did he do? He healed the sick, made the blind to see, healed the lame, made the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear, raised the dead back to life. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. You see, if they hate Jesus, they hate God the Father that sent his only begotten Son. I've heard preachers say, well, you know, the Jews, they, they, they you know, they, they, they don't have Jesus, but they got the Father. That's not what the Bible says. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So let's break this down. The Spirit of truth is called the Comforter, because that's going to be our comfort. He's going to comfort us. He's going to send the Spirit of Truth from the Father, and he's going to testify of Christ. He shall testify of me. If you're ever in a Pentecostal church, and they put emphasis on the Holy Spirit, I don't think it's the right Spirit, because it says, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. If they have a spirit it doesn't testify of Jesus, look out. Verse 27, And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let's take a look at the the Pentecost. I know some of this overlaps, but we'll see. Verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And that's interesting. The Greek word for wind is pneuma, and it's also the same word for spirit. It's where they get the word pneumatic, like pneumatic tools, air tools. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues as like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Wow. 
So you could keep reading this, and they were not speaking gibberish. They were speaking to people in their own language. All right, let's skip down to 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your young men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in, in these days, I'm sorry, in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vaporous smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before, before, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, oh, I love this. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshua HaMashiach, no. No. Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being determined, I'm sorry, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Check out my Abraham's bosom. Bible study, and you will understand what he's talking about here. David went to hell. Yes, he went to Abraham's bosom. For th and, and Christ did too, for three days and three nights, and he, and he preached them and, and took them up into, took them up into glory. Oh yeah. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right, right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy throat, foes, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Keep that in mind. Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. I'm going to remember this. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, not the Romans, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent of what? Repent of their unbelief? They believed in God? No. Repent of the wickedness in their hands, right? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach? 
No! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that glad re received his word were baptized in the same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen to that. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Wow. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Wow. So, what about they're going to make uh, our footstool? What's, what's up with that? Let's check something out here. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 3 and starting in verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Phileo was a Greek word. It meant love. There's two different words for love, phileo and agape. And uh, people will try to tell you they're uh, different types of love. I don't know. I, I did a Bible study on it a long, long, long time ago. I mean, you're talking probably almost 20 years ago. And I compared them, and I, I couldn't tell the difference, judging from the context. So just remember, phileo means love. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Didn't we read about uh, the key to the bottomless pit? Is that the key of David? I don't know. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Yeah. Didn't Christ say he stands at the door and knocks? Oh, yeah. I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. I wonder how many Christians are going to deny the name of Christ when they realize that they're going to have to die for their faith. Revelation 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Wait a minute. I thought, I thought God, the Jews were God's chosen people and he loved them. No. Well, not, not, not all of them, but Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation that thou that shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man Take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Ah, the footstool. That makes sense. Worship before our feet. 
Ah, the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. You know, you could read the entire 8th chapter of Romans, and there's a lot of meat. But this Bible study's almost been an hour, and, you know, I've been going over Joel chapter 2, and, you know, i got to get to Joel chapter 3, and then there's one or two more... Uh, I think there's one more, one or two more Day of the Lords in the Old Testament. Then we're going to start doing the Day of Christ. So, let's take a look. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because... They are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Here's a wonderful verse, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, starting verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye believe if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, and revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I wish somebody, I wish the Hebrew Roots people would read this, but they don't believe this. They don't believe Paul. The Torah keepers don't believe Paul. You will find the Hebrew roots people and the Torah keepers, many of them will tell you Paul is a false apostle because, because but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no Torah, no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh which with the afflict, affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. In Ephesians 4 and verse 30, we read, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of of redemption. And I believe that this is one of the major points that those that believe in eternal security want to nail home. And I believe in eternal security, but, you know, Jesus said you had to be born again of the Spirit. He told Nicodemus, you know, you had to be born again. There's a whole bunch of people in churches that just say a 30-second sinner's prayer 
And then they'll tell these people that they're they're saved, eternal security. And, and I don't even think they're born again, uh, most of them. But that's not up to me. That's just my opinion. I'm not the one that makes, you know, the, the decision. But what can I tell you? All right. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. When God sears your conscience with a hot iron, you're done. You can stand before a congregation and preach all you want. You're done. You're going to hell. You've, you've become a, a son of perdition. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, That's going to be in the latter times, forbidding to marry. Do you know, uh, well, you know the Vatican forbids its priesthood to marry. But the uh, Buddhists, the Buddhist monks, they're forbidden to marry also. Uh, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, I don't believe they're talking about pork here. I believe they're talking about clean meats. Uh, so evidently, vegetarianism. Isn't that real popular in the New Age movement? Oh, yeah. And commanding to abstain from meats. Very interesting. Latter days, right? All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are, are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their, their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. See, if somebody asks you well, why you're hopeful, you know, of your faith in Christ, we're supposed to be able to give an answer. Now, I'm not talking about casting pearls before swine or, you know, the Bible says a heretic after the uh, first and second admonition reject. That's a heretic. There's a difference between an unbeliever and a heretic. There's a difference. There's a big difference. I mean, there was a time I was an unbeliever and I acted like a heretic. But uh, the Lord had other ideas. Somebody who told me I'd be uh, doing, be a believer and doing Bible studies when I was in high school, I'd have probably laughed at him and cussed him out. And went home and played Black Sabbath music while smoking something other than cigarettes. So. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, that uh, they 
they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is, for it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Well, yeah. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Listen carefully. By which also he went, who? Christ. By which also he went and preached, preached unto the spirits in prison. You see, Christ, Christ went, to the, went to Abraham's bosom, hell, prison. He went there and preached. Verse 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Amen. I love this. Um, there's a guy running around on my uh, Google Plus page. Uh, yeah, I've got a Google Plus page. And uh, he was trying to tell everybody that the, uh, what, the, the Trinity or whatever is wrong. Well, you know, Trinity is not a Bible word. But Godhead is. And the angel said, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Why would the angel say that three times? Holy, holy, holy. Well, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. You know, uh, man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And, and, and man was made in God's image, right? So, and then they say, well, you know, Father's Son and the Holy Ghost. Uh, no, 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 no. That's three gods. Well, they just they just don't understand, or maybe they're deceivers. I don't know. In verse uh, Revelation chapter twenty two, verse seventeen, listen to this, and the Spirit and the Bride say, "Come," and let him that heareth say, "Come," and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The Spirit and the Bride. Wow. All right, well, this is, uh, let's see, part 11 of the Day of the Lord. It's part, I guess, part C of Joel, chapter 2. We're going to be doing Joel, chapter uh, three, and then we got one other thing on the day of the Lord in the Old Testament. I think it's one more. And then we're going to go to the New Testament and do the day of Christ. So, please keep me in mind. I know we've gone over a lot of the same stuff, but you know what? We need to know this for the latter days. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to live to see the end times, I don't know it. People for thousands of years, a couple thousand years have been thinking, oh, it's the end times, it's the end times, it's the end times. I'll tell you what, people. From the time I was a... a, a I, I used to go to a Baptist church when I was in uh, junior high school, middle school. What was it? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. And I believed... And uh, I guess I didn't believe strong enough. You know, I saw hypocrisy in the church. And of course, I was a rebellious kid that wanted to do his own thing and didn't want God in his knowledge. And hey, I want to do what I want to do. And, you know, and I saw the hypocrisy in the church. So I fell away. But I tell you what, the America that I knew back then in the 60s, and what it is 
today, I can't, I can't believe the changes I have seen in my lifetime. I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, the, the wickedness. I mean, when I was a little kid, we, we didn't, I, I, in 1960, I was arguing, well, I don't know about arguing, but I was having a discussion with a guy at work and told him that the crime has just gone crazy, you know. And he's like, no, 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 it's not. It's just, you know, we've got more uh, television coverage and, and media and internet. And I go, no, 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 it's, there's a lot more crime now. So he got on his smartphone and he goes, uh, so I, he says, well, let's check it out. And I says, well, all right. And he's like, well, let's check out how many murders there were. And he checked it out. I think it was in 1960, there was less than a thousand murders in the entire United States from coast to coast, less than a thousand in the entire United States. Do you know that in Chicago alone, Chicago is the third largest city in the United States. Third. There was 762 murders in Chicago alone last year. That's not New York. That's not L.A. Just Chicago. Between Chicago and Baltimore, they had more murders than the entire United States in 1960. And when he got done looking all this stuff up, he goes, wow, Bob, you're, you're right. I... I didn't believe it. And he goes, ah, must be all those, because people have easy access to guns. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not true. Back in 1960, I could have been a 8, 10-year-old, 12-year-old kid. And if I'd have had $25, I could have sent a money order to Sears, and they would have mailed a 22 rifle to my house. Mailed it to my house. No background check, no gun store, just mail a check to Sears in their catalog, and they would mail a gun to your house. And that all changed after the Kennedy assassination. Then they said, oh, you got to fill out paperwork, and we got to run a background check, and we got to do this, and we got to do that before you can buy a gun. Back in the day, you didn't, you, you just, you just send them a check. They mail you a gun through the mail. Things have changed, people. Things have changed. You know, when I was in high school in, what, 71, 72, somewhere around there, uh, there was a kid that had a pickup truck, and he had a shotgun. And the principal walked by and, and saw the shotgun in the window. What did the principal do? Did he call the SWAT team? No. Me and my buddies were standing by the truck. He, he walks up and he goes, that's a nice shotgun. What is that? You know, and. He takes it out and he shows it, shows it, hands it to him, and he's looking at it and he's like, "Wow, this is nice." You know, he checked it, made sure it wasn't loaded, but he's like, "Yeah, this is nice," and he hands it back to him. Things have changed, people. Things have changed. America's not the same anymore. Leave it to Beaver and uh, uh, Sheriff Mayberry, RFD, and then all that stuff. It's out the window. Judgment's coming, people. Judgment. When you got sodomites getting married and, and abortions by the millions, look out. Pray, people. Pray, people. You know, pray. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus who is the Christ. His precious name, amen.